the champion's greatest challenge is to repeat it. You climb to this mountaintop and then you realize there are many more. You learn to go down the mountain, learn more about yourself, and climb up to the next one. Weight class world champion in less than a year. It's never been done before. Put the four ounce gloves on, lock the cage. I have one job to do. To be the best, you have to beat the best of the best. Becoming a champion to me means that there's a lot more work to do. I did something once, and being a champion is not something you just become once is who you are. To me, it's an affirmation of who I am and who I've always seen myself to be. And I think that people think somebody becomes a champion right when they see that belt wrapped around their waist. But for me, being a champion was when I stepped into this endeavor, when I chose this lifestyle to be a warrior. Grab your first partner! Round number one! After the championship fight, I remember the second the fight was over, and the men, I'm a world champion, I'm a world champion, great. That's awesome. I was like, man, I gotta get back to the gym. That was the first thought that was in my mind. I was thinking about, like, what can I do to get better? That wasn't even all that I can be or all that I will be. I watched your fight yesterday. I used to watch it back, and I was like, what, what did I do? Yeah. I was like, I thought we were landing. The forward. I knew there was something more, and I have to keep digging for it. I think people put too much emphasis on a weight class, whether it's 170 or heavyweight, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm disciplined, I'm a warrior, it's like, I'm here to fight. I here at the gym, we train with everybody. Whether if you're 55 or 45 and you train with the heavyweight, you gotta learn how to move. So it doesn't matter to me, it's like, put me in a fight. Once I, you lock those cage doors, I claim the victory and move forward. The champion's greatest challenge is to repeat it. You climb to this mountaintop and then you realize there are many more. Right, like what do you want to do? You want to go back down the mountain, learn more about yourself, and climb up to the next one. I always know that I can be better, and that I will be better. And I know that who I was four years ago, who I was last year, who I'll be in four years, who I'll be tomorrow, be so much better. So even in that moment, that was the best that day. But at the same time too, I know that I can still refine and pick it apart and there's still opportunity to be better. November 24, 2023 was, you know, was a stamp on it, the first of many, into like a passport. Many, many more to claim. Let's go conquer them all. And since I was little, I've always liked nature. And I always had this goal in my life that I want to hunt, grow, and cultivate everything that I eat. My grandpa being back in Congo, he hunted for sure, and you know, pretty cool. Anything like that could be out in nature, he loved doing. I always felt like connected with him that way, and I always asked my dad, I want to go out in nature, and we'll live in Okeechobee. I love being outside. Cows are my favorite animal. <laughs> Cattle, like, I love them. So, living on the farm for a little bit was fun, and now that I've been blessed with this new place, and. I would sit in the backyard, read my Bible, chill. Yeah, I can go fishing in, in my backyard and I haven't caught anything yet. I'm working on it. It's only problem about fishing at this time is the current so heavy. How far down did you hook it? I'm probably closer to middle, but like middle back. Like, yeah, that's about where I was. Yeah. But it's a great place. I could just sit by the water for hours and think and write and journal, or just spend time walking in the grass, you know, barefoot, because just for me, it's like I just really do get grounded that way. When I'm in nature, I gotta capture everything and reorganize. Just the way the river flows, high tide, low tide, what animals come, at what time. I don't know if it's mentally, subconsciously, spiritually, but you see the order of nature, then you can put like a lot of things in your life in order to. Own multiple businesses, being a professional athlete, being a son, being a friend. 
I think that sometimes as a fighter, you get all this attention, everything's about you, all the questions are about you. That's cool. But I sometimes I can just like be in the middle of nowhere and just find that peaceful space. So for me, it's really been going within and uh, connecting with where God wants me to be. But the fact that I've been chosen to be on a world stage, the fact that I've been chosen to fight the, the best of the best, to keep dominating and prove that I'm the best of the best, I'm blessed. It's Riyadh season, PFL champs versus Bellator. Who's ready for the greatest pay-per-view and first pay-per-view in the history of Saudi Arabia? Let's go. PFL Bellator acquisition is pretty cool. They brought former and current champions together, a whole card full of champions, and everybody gets to go at it. That's what movies are made of. It's the first time something's happening in history, and that's the only record that can't be broken. So many other records can be broken, but being the first one can't be. And that's what, you know, LeBron James said, and I thought that was pretty cool. PFL champs versus Bellator champs. Think of it as MMA's all-star game. This will be the first of many major pay-per-view events with the top talent in the world. Champs versus champs. To be a part of that to me is pretty cool because it's the work at the right time the Lord made it happen. You never went through what you went through if you never won when you won, went through the challenging moments. It all timed out for a certain reason. Well, I remember being the first fighter on a card. Actually, last year, PFL. And I wasn't even in the season then, and then I get to be in the co-main event of one of the biggest cards in history. It's the things you pray for, right? You see, like, the Cinderella stories. You see the Cinderella man stories. You see the great moments in sports history, life history. Hey, but for you, you just come off this fairy tale run at light heavyweight from the Challenger Series to champion. Why is the right move for you to go to middleweight and take this fight? For me, it's like if you want to be the best, you got to go challenge the best where they're at. He's been the king of the middleweight division in Bellator. And for me, my focus is to be a multiple time, multi class weight champion. That's my opportunity to do it. He's tough, he's durable, he's a good fighter. I'm just down to scrap, bro. I'm here to get in a fist fight. You know, whoever's there, like I will paint that canvas, I'll paint that canvas, I'll paint that canvas. It's the art of violence, it's the art of war, it's the art of combat. And I'll do it with intentional discipline, righteous destruction. It's not Johnny, it's not this, it's a blank canvas. They're the canvas, I get a pain. Emperor's my dog and my money's always on Emperor. <laughs> After this fight, the new supporters, new fans, they'll see the person soon be considered the greatest fighter of all time. <laughs>